because it's quite a small restaurant actually, so we can't all eat at the same time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and so on the left you can see one of the large uh, temporary storage sites for the radioactive waste. So inside the black bags, that's where the soil, which was taken from the top layers as part of the decontamination, was put into these black bags and piled up here. <laughs> And so if it's just soil in the bags, of course, uh, the, they're quite a flat or the same size surface, but because there's also trees and leaves and other waste and so on in the bags, that's why you can see some different shapes and so on in these bags. And the river on the right is called the Kidogawa or the Kido River, and it's actually very famous for having uh, large streams of salmon coming up the river here. At the peak, there's even 100,000 salmon uh, in this uh, being caught in coming up the river here. And so following the disaster, the, the salmon which was coming up here was not being uh, caught and so on, but they started uh, this again from last autumn. <laughs> And so the river here, you can see on the right, this is where the water is gathered and then it's transported up to the top of the hill to be purified and used for the tap water. And so there is actually a sign on the right which says you are not allowed to fish here or no fishing allowed. Uh, so the water is being tested and they, they say that the water passes the you know measurements required for So those figures are made available to the public so they can see uh, regular or regular interviews. They monitor and they show those figures. Um, and then so you can see, for example, after there's been rain and the water becomes more cloudy, it does increase um, the levels. Um, so he was talking about this with the taxi driver on his way here today actually and the taxi driver is from Naraha town and he was saying they use the water for bathing and washing but they don't use it for anything they put inside their mouths for eating or drinking. That was just what the taxi driver, their personal way of doing it is. But that's is the tap water. But so they use, they buy it for, I guess, for drinking or eating. 
飲むかとかその近くで安全だと安心するかっていうとまた別の問題かなと。And so, in regards to the figures that are made public about either the levels in the water, or also we're going to be seeing a few incinerators as we travel. And the, the numbers or the figures that are made public are, well, you know, they fit what is being given as the official standards. However, when it comes to the question of, oh, well, do you feel comfortable about eating that or drinking that or living there and so on, that is another different question and judgment. So, in regards to the actual standards or even the manual for the workers who are living here, they are probably told to be wearing this gear and so on. But even he himself, you know, when moving through the restricted zones and so on, everybody's kind of gotten so used to the situation that they don't do it anymore. And you can see the new houses being built on the right here. And there's actually quite a lot of new houses being built in this area. And so it's six months since the evacuation order was lifted here, but only about 5% of the population have come back. Uh, but the fact that even though it's only a small number of people who have moved back, the fact that there are so many um, new houses being built does show that there are a lot more people who are planning to be moving back and they're in the process of building houses themselves. Uh, Yes. 
ten becquerels から十万ベクレル。So from eight thousand to a hundred thousand. What's a norm? Like on a, a standard for us would be like point three becquerels in one year. でももう。法的には震災前は100ベクレルを超えるとちゃんと管理されてたはずなんだけど震災直後いきなり8000まで上げて。So prior to the disaster,、uh, up to 100 becquerels per kilogram, anything higher than that would be treated as radioactive waste and kept in a very controlled place. But after the disaster, this 100 was automatically raised to like 8000. So, this will be the entrance for where the, the waste、uh, disposal site will be. So, this will be not a temporary site but the final、uh, storage site. And you can see also there s the two、uh, cameras up there as well, the watch cameras, and they're also something we see a lot of in this area now. And any waste which is 100,000 becquerels and above, that's stored in the interim storage facilities on site at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. And、uh, that's the only location for、uh, radioactive waste of such high levels. And so, for waste up to 100,000 becquerels, there are various sites、uh, throughout eastern Japan which are designated as、uh, interim storage sites for that. So, all these homes, these are all, they've all been evacuated. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure if there's anyone specifically living, but it is okay to live there, so it's permitted to live in these houses. Whether they're actually here or not, we're not sure, but this is an area which is designated as okay to return to. Okay to be but yeah, they're gonna build this. And it was in September that the evacuation order was lifted so people could start coming back. And it was in November, December that the plans for the storage site were s e t Um, so that was when it was made official, but most of the local people had heard about the plans to, to build that site there. Um, and one of the factors about、uh, deciding to build it there, of course,、um, everywhere in Japan, nowhere, no local community had agreed to build it. And about the decision making for the site,、um, of course, nowhere in Japan would the local residents accept a site for 100 becquerels and over. But the reason that they're going forward with the plan here is it was already an industrial waste, waste zone. And so there wasn't owners of the land or residents who would need. From them, so that's why they've gone forward with the plan here. Because the other places, there's, there's no decision made anywhere in Japan about where final storage or final repositories 